After only 117 days since the last full Starship flight, the third attempt just took place and was by far the most impressive. Here we saw significant improvements from the past flight, with a successful hot stage separation, booster re-entry, an upper stage coast phase, and even a partial upper stage re-entry. They even managed to complete a host of other tests related to future Starship operations. Here I'll go more in depth under what happened on the third flight test, where some issues arose, what went well, and more. As the clock counted down, SpaceX confirmed that everything was a go for launch. They were a bit concerned about the weather, and specifically the wind. However, as the clock hit T40 seconds, they passed right through it without the need for a hold. At T5 seconds, the water cooled still played, began shooting out water in preparation for a liftoff. Seconds later, the 33 Raptor engines on the booster began to ignite. By T plus 2 seconds, Starship was in the air and had fully cleared the pad 10 seconds in. Here it began accelerating into the slight overcast in Boca Chica, Texas. You could see in the graphic provided at the bottom that all 33 Raptor engines were firing without any missing. Fortunately on this launch, SpaceX had multiple onboard cameras on both the booster and upper stage, which provided some incredible images, especially later in the flight. At T plus 52 seconds, the launch vehicle had reached max Q, the moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket. Over the next nearly two minutes, we saw different angles from both the ground and the ship looking down at the rocket as it accelerated and gained altitude. It then reached one of its most significant flight milestones, stage separation. At T plus 2 minutes and 44 seconds, you could see both from the onboard camera and the engine graphic at the bottom that all but three of the booster's Raptor engines shut off. Just a few seconds later, will still attach to the booster. The six upper stage engines ignited before the two finally separated just before T plus 2 minutes and 50 seconds into the launch. At this point, the booster began its flip maneuver while the upper stage started to accelerate and gain altitude. This was the point during the last flight where problems arose that led to the explosion of the first stage. This time, however, there was a different result. At T plus 2 minutes and 52 seconds, the engine graphic shows that the 13th center Raptor engines on Super Hippie all began to light again for the boost backburn. Soon after, around 3 minutes into the flight, some incredible video was shown where the booster is horizontal and in the background you can see the upper stage continuing toward its insertion. Starting at T plus 3 minutes and 40 seconds, the booster's 13 engines began to gradually shut off as part of the boost backburn shutdown. During this process, you could also partially see some significant venting from the bottom of the booster. Over the next few minutes, the upper stage continued to fire its engines while the booster shifted toward a vertical position in preparation for re-entry. At T plus 6 minutes and 36 seconds, the booster was transonic and could be seen flying toward the ground and through the atmosphere. At that point, it began using its four grid fins to control its orientation and angle. Officially, based on SpaceX's provided flight profile, the booster landing burn startup was scheduled to happen right at T plus 6 minutes and 46 seconds. For the next 18 seconds, the engines were planned to slow the booster before a gradual splashdown in the gulf. Looking at the footage, you can see the booster starting to spin back and forth as the grid fins work to keep the stage in the proper orientation. Soon after, it passes the clouds before what looks like a possible explosion and loss of signal to the booster. Right before that, the engine graphics showed that only three engines were lit, one in the very center and two in the middle engine ring. Of these engines, the two in the middle ring were only lit for a second or two before going out. While this was all happening, the ship was still accelerating with its six engines. At T plus 8 minutes and 35 seconds, six engines were shut off. At that point, the upper stage was at an altitude of 150 kilometers and traveling more than 26,000 kilometers an hour. In addition to the main launch milestones, SpaceX had a few in-flight test plan which began around 12 minutes into the flight. Specifically, at T plus 11 minutes and 58 seconds, flight controllers announced that the payload door had opened on Starship. This is a relatively small, thin door that the company wanted to test, assuming the vehicle made it into the coast phase. Later in the flight, a camera inside the upper stage showed the payload door closed. They also attempted a propellant transfer demo approximately 24 minutes into the mission. 
As far as whether or not these tests were fully successful, will take time for SpaceX to determine and eventually release to the public. All of this led to one of the final milestones, a Raptor engine relay in re-entry. SpaceX clarified that the relay is not a deorbit burn, and it actually would have raised the perigee. It was just to demonstrate that they can relay the engine in space, microgravity, etc. This being said, they decided to skip that burn and go straight to re-entry. After a break in the live stream, right around 43 minutes into the flight, SpaceX provided a live feed to the upper stage with onboard cameras. Over the next few minutes, you can see the fins adjust as the vehicle got closer to re-entry. There also were a few moments where debris will look like heat shield tiles flying off. For thus, 45 minutes into the flight, a lot of tiles could be seen combined with a roar from the SpaceX crowd watching live. Just past T plus 46 minutes, you can see the heating of the fins and ship start as a began re-entry. It's worth noting that the movement of the upper stage and its fins during this process suggests there could have been an issue related to the vehicle's attitude control and its general orientation. This continued to get more aggressive during the re-entry process. By T plus 47 minutes and 14 seconds, incredible views of the ship and plasma forming could be seen. Just before 49 minutes in, the video feed was cut. By then, the vehicle was still re-entering the atmosphere, however the signal was cut. Starship entry was scheduled to begin at T plus 49 minutes with the vehicle finally making contact with the water around 15 minutes later. After the video feed was cut, a few minutes had passed and SpaceX wasn't sure if the vehicle was still intact. They first mentioned that they lost connection with the tracking and data relay satellite system and Starlink at the same time. This was a good indicator that the vehicle had likely broken up during re-entry. They later confirmed that they lost Ship 28 during re-entry. Based on the footage we saw leading up to re-entry with the heat shell tiles and debris, it's very possible the ship lost a crucial amount of tiles before re-entry leading to a weak point in the eventual breakup. There also could have been an issue with the angle and exact orientation of Ship 28, which is crucial. Had the vehicle made it past re-entry, it would have continued on and impacted the ocean. Overall, SpaceX was extremely happy with the result of the launch and considered it a massive success. On the last flight, the booster was destroyed soon after stage separation and the upper stage nearly got the engine shut off. This time, the booster made it just about all the way to the ground and the ship got part of the way through re-entry. Not only that, but they also completed a few tests during the flight, which I mentioned prior. All of which will provide the company with a wealth of real flight data to apply to the next Starship prototypes and launch attempts. In regard to this mission, the company was quoted saying, the third flight test aims to build on what we've learned from previous flights while attempting a number of ambitious objectives. This rapid iterative development approach has been the basis for all of SpaceX's major innovative advancements, including Falcon, Dragon, and Starlink. Recursive improvement is essential as we work to build a fully reusable transportation system capable of carrying both crew and cargo to Earth orbit, help humanity return to the moon, and ultimately travel to Mars and beyond, they said. With this test complete and the results promising, we can expect a fourth flight test relatively soon. To put it in perspective, the time between the first test flight and the second was 212 days. The time between the second flight and the launch this morning was only 117. The improvements should also only help the approval process and launch prep for the next test. As far as hardware goes, just over a month ago on February 2nd, the company tweeted saying, Super heavy boosters for the next three flights with a fourth ready to stack in the Starbase Mega Bay. It's clear that they have the hardware needed to continue flying this vehicle at a rapid pace. As for today's test, we can expect SpaceX to release even more info over the next days and weeks. Teams will be busy analyzing everything that went well and didn't, finding fixes, and implementing them. Something we can look forward to seeing in the coming months. SpaceX just completed the third flight test of Starship and it was quite the spectacle. From stage separation to the booster's return, upper stage re-entry and much more, it was a big improvement from the past launches. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Okay, so SpaceX has told us red headline, SpaceX loses Starship during re-entry, cutting mission short. Red headline, that's a little bit harsh to me, I think they got pretty close. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to take out. 
This is now breaking news. SpaceX now confirming that they have lost the Starship during re-entry. The mission cut short. Now what does this all mean? Now that it's confirmed. So SpaceX's position on this, if you go back to whatever it was my local time this morning, 6 a.m., that even getting off the launch pad would be success. The payload in this case is not a satellite, it is not a human being, it's the data that the Starship system is generating and feeding back to SpaceX. The fact that they were able to launch the combined system, the booster and the spacecraft, get it to the orbital height that they did, the altitude they did, they had a successful hot separation in that process. Starship traveled on its telemetry over to the Indian Ocean. And then it started to re-enter Earth's atmosphere. The camera feed was maintained because of the onboard Starlink, and the signal was lost at 65 kilometers altitude. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel, and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member, so click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.